So we had a lot of requests for demonstrations. Um, we wanted to come out here today here in Jackson, Mississippi and film an unedited demonstration of the Sintero V2 VTOL uh, with both a gimbaled EOIR payload and a standard 42 megapixel Sony A7R3. Uh, today it's going to be operated out of SEI's mobile operations center. We'll do a quick walk around of kind of what that entails and then we'll get into uh, assembling the aircraft, going through the checklist and then ultimately into the mission. So all we've done so far is unhatch the trailer, get some stuff set up, take the aircraft out of the case. Comes in two cases, this one and that one. Wings and tails in one, fuse in the other with GCS stuff kind of in both. All the foams custom cut, uh, allowing for, for, for that sort of uh, workflow. Just two cases, everything's uh, got locks, wheels, all that kind of stuff. So transport's relatively simple and the cases themselves aren't that large. So. Again, we'll get into a little bit about the MOC, and then we'll swing around to the side, show the communications mast, and kind of what, what all that houses, so. Yep. So, Nathan, if you can, just go ahead and uh, talk about what is housed on this mast. This is a 15-footer, so it, it's not up all, it's, it's whole 15 feet because we don't need it. Um, but they, they can either be 15 feet, 30 feet, or 60 feet, depending on the terrain uh, that you're operating in. Yeah, so uh, this is a Skyhopper. Uh, it's our C1 Link. Uh, operates on a 2.4 gigahertz uh, band. And uh, you can see we've got the uh, tether. Uh, this is kind of our umbilical cord uh, that's running into our MOC. We've got our RS-232 connection, our network cable, and our power run through here and into the uh, MOC and eventually into the server rack where it uh, interfaces with Mission Planner. Okay, so we'll swing in, we'll show the MOC super quick. So a lot of these, a lot of what's housed in here is gonna be relatively standard no matter your operation. Um, retractable storage space, it houses, you know, it, it could charge batteries while it's there. Storage, couple, couple chairs here, a four monitor display, and then all the power is in the back. So it's a generator box with a control panel, uh, as well as a battery reserve. So also uh, climate control, both heating and cooling. It's not on right now because we don't need it. It's a pretty nice day out. Um, that also extends the uh, the life of your power supply, not not having to run that climate control. Yep. So if I didn't miss anything. No, no, and we're, right. we're gonna be operating from one of the uh, two server racks that are in installed in this MOC. Um, uh, the other, two, uh, other server rack will be uh, powered off and used later in a different flight. Okay, so we'll get into assembling the aircraft. Okay. Nathan, just kind of go ahead and uh, yeah. get everything. So uh, we normally uh, install the wings first. Uh, we have two wings uh, with uh, these quick connect clips. The, the motor booms uh, connect like that. And then if you, you see we have uh, this connector here it interfaces with the wing and uh, works really well. We just uh, slide it in, and uh, when it gets a real good uh, snap, you, you'll actually feel these clips. They stand up pretty tall, and then that's how you know that it's in there. Cody, can you provide some support while I attach the other wing? Two things to note with the way this aircraft's assembled: you don't have to mess with uh, two things: wiring and tooling to assemble the aircraft. You see how it just snaps in and gets its power that way. So this wing is uh, slightly different from the uh, other wing. Uh, it has the pitot tube installed in the wing itself. So airspeed sensor. And it provides all the information through the wing uh, on the left wing. And when you hear the clicks, that works you can feel make sure that they are fully seated okay so that's working next uh, we will attach the VTOL um, two sections when we're working we're just checking to make sure that the uh, control rods and horns are good um, it's just a little easier to do that now while you're assembling it than uh, later when you have to reach under the aircraft Okay, same thing with this. When it clicks in place, you know it's there. And, and we'll just tug to make sure that they're fully seated. And that's the, uh, that 
is the end of the, yep, the that, assembly process. That's assembly. Okay. Let me so, get this case out of the way for you. Thanks. All right, so what's the next step, Nathan? Next step, uh, once the, um, the wings and tails uh, are in place, we'll go ahead and um, install the battery. And we have our main power here, battery power there. We'll just keep those nice and handy. We have uh, Velcro straps inside, and we you just want to make sure that they don't uh, get bunched up and, and underneath the battery so they just come over the top of the battery and strap it in. Okay so we have a uh, checklist, we have two checklists, we have the main checklist and then we have an emergency procedures checklist. We'll be operating from this checklist. Uh, every time we fly we use this checklist and there's uh, basically several steps here and it's a front and back. So uh, Cody and I are going to work together on this. I'm going to get my headset on and we're going to utilize the call and response method for that. Check, check, check. Okay, gotcha. Alright, so uh, what's the first step? First step is checking the motor booms, make sure they're locked and latched in place. Okay, motor booms are locked and latched in place and they are secure. The wings attached securely. The wings are attached securely. The tails are attached securely. The tails are attached securely. Alright, motors attached freely spinning. They're attached and spinning freely. At this step, we're just looking for anything that's, that feels different. Any grinding, any loose feeling, they're, they're, they're secure. So we'll move on to the next step. Props are attached securely. They are attached securely on the front and on the back. And the control surfaces are secure. We'll just lightly tug on the control surfaces to make sure they're secure. We do this in the process when we're setting up uh, before we assemble, but it's a good practice to do it. At, um, after it's assembled to just lightly tug on the control surfaces and verify that there are no cracks in the hinge. And the payload is installed. Payload is installed. All right, we'll go batteries installed but not plugged in. Battery is installed but it's not plugged in. All right, we'll uh, CG check with the motors forward. Okay, I'm gonna do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and strap this down just uh, in place where I think it should be, where the battery I think it should be. If we need to adjust the battery, the, the CG, the battery can move forward or aft as necessary. So I'm going to put the, uh, the uh, propellers, the motors down and check the CG. Okay, and the CG is checked. It's about a centimeter behind the standard CG. This payload is a little bit heavier and uh, this aircraft is configured a little differently. So uh, the CG that uh, on certain aircraft, uh, other configurations of this aircraft is uh, about a centimeter forward and this aircraft configuration is a little bit back. So the CG has been checked and it's fine. All right, the uh, controller is Q stabilized and on. Okay, so I'll get the uh, Spectrum transmitter. We're utilizing uh, a 900 megahertz uh, transmitter. We're gonna power it on and it is in Q stabilized. All right, and the laptop is on. Our GCS computer is on. You can go to the uh, telemetry computer and continue from there. Alright, so we'll go telemetry is plugged in. It is. Plane is open. Plane is on. Okay, let me turn the plane on now. So with the, uh, the telemetry com uh, uh, radio plugged in, and turned on and the computer and the mission planner launched, we will uh, then move on to the next step which is powering the aircraft on. Once the aircraft finishes booting up, uh, we will connect to mission planner. Okay, next step. So, um, 
mission planner is connecting to the aircraft, it's going to be basically it's downloading the parameters just like any uh, Pixhawk based um, flight controller. It's doing that process uh, and we're just waiting for it to complete it. Once all those parameters are downloaded, we'll move on to the next step, which is um, looking at the telemetry computer and make sure that uh, it's getting information from the aircraft fed directly to the telemetry. Okay, let's move on to the next step then. Okay, so uh, what's the percentage of the radio link in the HUD? 99. Okay, 99%. Okay. And then uh, next step? Okay, do we have any errors on the HUD? Okay, good. Okay, so um, since this gives us a, a compass, we're going to use that to, de to determine the heading uh, of the aircraft and compare it to what it's actually showing. So uh, I know that north is generally in this direction, east is behind me. So I'm going to um, put this in uh, on the aircraft and then point this to north and then get a reading. Now granted, um, you got to be careful because you can get some interference if you're around certain things, but over the battery you should be okay. So north is this way, I'm showing about 0, 0.9. Zero nine five. What, what do you have on the uh, telemetry computer? You don't have uh, the HUD. Is the HUD showing that? Okay. Good. So ninety six. He's getting 96 on the telemetry, so I'm uh, showing uh, around 95, maybe 92 to 95 on here. Uh, you could use your phone to do the same thing. You just need to know that uh, it could be a little off. So I like to use two sources. We know from a pre previous experience that that's pretty close. That is within 20 degrees of known heading, so we'll move on to the next step. GPS checks and we have good GPS signal, so we'll move on to the next. Okay. Okay. Ground speed and airspeed. Our ground speed and altitude. Okay. Okay. We'll arm the servos now by removing this plug. Basically, it interrupts power to the servos. I remove it, and the, you'll hear the servos. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it appears to be on fans or uh, Okay, not applicable. Moved on. Okay, the hatch cover is in place. This one is, and that one is. So all hatch covers are in place and secure. Okay. So uh, we're going to check the Q stabilization, um, make sure that it's working properly. So I'm going to basically roll the aircraft to the uh, right and verify. And it, you can see that it fights the movement and uh, verify that uh, that's working to, uh, on the HUD. Okay, pitch up. Okay. Okay, so that's working. So we've got telemetry working. Okay, move on to the next step. Okay, so now that we've checked the, uh, the Q stabilization is working, we're going to control using our C2 controller and make sure that we have control of the control surfaces. Okay, uh, we have control of the aircraft in Q stabilize. All right, on the switch, push forward to off. It is off. All right, and check on the wire stabilization. Okay. Control, Switch into FBWA mode, fly by wire. This is forward flight mode, and we're going to ch uh, check uh, Q or, uh, stabilization in FBWA. We'll do the same thing, we'll tilt, uh, tilt up, pitch up, and it fights the movement. We're going to right wing down and it fights the movement, left wing down and it fights the movement. And that works. Now we'll do our controls checks, make sure that's going to work properly. So, left aileron. 
left wing goes down, right wing goes up. Same thing with the elevator. All controls are working in FBWA. Both motors tilted to the same degree. All right, and going to the 